All right, welcome back to another conversation, we'll call it another conversation. And today we are going to go after community. And what I mean by that is, what does community have to do with becoming wealthy? What does community have to do with becoming rich? What, what does community have to do with really anything? And coming from a socially awkward guy, probably one of the most socially awkward people you've ever met, and I'm talking about me, I'm here to tell you, community is everything. And I'm going to prove that to you, right? And so I, I don't want to, you know, create these, these trainings as theoretical, yet they're theoretical. And I don't want to treat them as fact, yet sometimes uh, we need, you know, we need proof, right? And I love the aspect of learning through uh, understanding and, and, and through practice. And I can prove to you community is everything. I'm going to do that to you in this training if you stay with me. And the reason I'm going to share this with you is because without it, I can promise you, you will never get wealthy. It is physically impossible to get wealthy, to become rich, whatever word you want to use, without community. I'm going to prove that to you in this conversation. And so let's let's talk about the average person. And so when I was growing up, I was afraid of people. I was, uh, you know, growing up in a small town in Northwest Indiana, I was told if you work hard, you can have whatever you want. And so I spent my whole life working hard. I worked hard all the way through high school. My dad died when I was 12. I was working before school, after school. And then when I graduated high school, I had a reality check. And that reality check was, what am I going to do with my life? And money was always a challenge inside of our household, like it is many households. Now we had everything we needed. And so it wasn't like that far extreme, but you know, there were times where we were like, how are we going to pay the bills? And my mom did an amazing job raising three kids on her own. And she taught us so much about work ethic. She taught us so much about honoring our word. She taught us so much about being the person that you want to to be, being the person that you want other people to be, and just doing whatever the right thing is at the moment. Now that is gonna change depending on who you are, where you're at in those moments, but those, those principles were instilled in us from a young age. And the work hard ethic was the one I was most proud of. And I remember working hard all the way through college, driving to college every day for five years because I was in a commuter college, Indiana University Northwest. So I was driving about 50 miles, uh, about 60 miles round trip every day, five days a week for five years because I wanted to learn how to make money. I wanted to learn how to become private equity advisors. I wanted to learn how to become wealth managers, hedge funds, all of that world because I heard that if I was an investor, I could make a lot of money. That was, that's what uh, the books I was reading, that's what everyone told me. And so I went to school and I understood finance at a level that is hard to even, um, hard to even explain. I, I was tutoring MBA level graduates as an undergrad. I, I was soaking in everything I could about finance and I, I thought I understood it. And then I went out to the workforce. And over the last 10, 15 years, I, I can tell you, applying knowledge, right? Learn, understand, and practice. This is what our Learn and Grow Rich model talks about is there, you can't replace it. You can't, you can't learn how the reality of the world works by reading it through a book. You have to actually go out there and understand it and practice it and make the mistakes and learn from your mentors and do all that. And so over, you know, I, I, I went into the workforce in uh, right around 2008 when the whole financial collapse was happening. And I thought I was going to make a lot of money because I had the knowledge base. I was I was really smart and I knew all of this stuff and I could not make money. <laughs> so it's like, why am I not making money? I know this stuff. And so I sent out 3,500 resumes over about two years and I finally got a job working for somebody in Chicago. Now, when I say job, what I really mean is somebody put me to work without pay. And so I drove to Chicago every day for a year. That's about 200, 250 miles round trip, depending on the location I went. Every day, five days a week for a year, I would come home exhausted on the on Friday afternoon and just fall over on the couch. And I was like, well, I'm working hard. How come I'm not making money? 
right? How come I'm not making money? And then I, I finally, after the second year, and I did that for free. And the reason I did that for free is because I was, I didn't have experience, right? We say learn, understand, and practice. I didn't have any practice. I learned a lot. I understood a little, but I didn't get to practice any. And so I was practicing for free. In fact, it was costing me to practice. And so the second year, I actually got a job working at the Chicago Board of Trade. And guess what? I didn't make any money that entire year, but I was practicing and practicing. I would go into work every day. And I, I had a challenge. I couldn't sell somebody on the vision that options on futures was a good strategy for their investment, right? I just couldn't do it. I grew up uh, hanging around people where it's like, hey man, uh, these people work really hard for their money. I, I'm not gonna tell you to go buy a, some option that has all of this risk on a future that will probably never ever, right? The, if we look at the statistical aspect of it, never make you money. And so I didn't really like the ethics of that industry. I didn't really like what I was doing. And then I got a job working for something called a valuation consulting firm. And I didn't even know what it was, but I offered, I said, I will work for free. Just give me some of this practice. Give me some of this experience. And she was so gracious. She said, Zach, I'm not going to have you work for free, but I'm going to pay you, you know, like, like $30,000, $35,000 a year, working 80 to 100 hours a week. I didn't care. I consumed everything I could on valuation theory, private asset valuation. I have valued everything you can, almost everything you can possibly imagine. I have valued humans. I have valued um, private companies, public companies. I valued assets, debt. I value, if, uh, if it can create a cash flow, I've probably valued it. I valued all the software for all the major railroads. I have valued economic damages, meaning when you sue somebody for $400 million, where did the $400 million come from? So everything has to be quantified. So that was my job. And I learned so much about this aspect called value. And I still wasn't making money. The type of money I wanted, and so I, you know, I, I ended up getting a, a job working for one of the best companies in the world, making six figures a year. Had every bell and whistle you could think of. I was still working six to hundred hours a week, but I still wasn't making the type of money I wanted. Money I could retire. I wanted money where I could eventually see the end of this proverbial road. And what I saw was me having a lot of knowledge, but not having that translate into money-making capacity. And so with the Learn and Grow Rich community aspect, the idea is we start off with learning, right? So um, we start off with learning. You have to learn. There is no shortcut around it. I, I This is like fact. I can prove this all day long, so I'm not going to spend time to that. And then what you have to do is you have to go make some money. Now, one of the biggest misconceptions I see people, and I did this too, and I, and I, I want to... Uh, to have you look at it before you make the same mistake I did is I quit my job way too early. I was a high paying six figure earner in a beautiful company and I had tons of potential ahead of me and I quit way too early. I could have used that job to buy a bunch more rental properties. I could have used that job to financially secure myself much better than I did before I, I jumped. I made the proverbial jump, but I was so anxious to jump. And so I'm not saying a job is good or bad. I'm saying it it's a journey, right? It's a step in the journey. And I see so many entrepreneurs and so many business people, they they bag on jobs, but then they go become the boss and then have to hire people. And so think about that, right? There's so many co contradictions in this world. And that's one of them is jobs are bad, but I'm going to quit my job to go become a boss to give it to somebody else. And so what I say is just make the workplace fun. Make make there, There's ways to do this. We have so many people that work for us and they love their jobs because they get to express themselves. They get to be uh, express their talents. They get to make more money if they actually perform better. We have, they get to work with me and I, my wife and I, we train and develop them. We have a plan for each one of our team members so that they're growing. Because if you're not growing, that's when you get stagnant. That's when you get stale. That's when you, you know, when you lose interest. And so you have to learn how to make money. And, and so in this aspect, I learned how to make money in a W-2 job. Now, what I didn't have in this entire journey that I'm talking to you about is community. And what do you mean by that is, I mean, when I graduated college, I did not have a vast network of people to draw upon. And the reason that was is because I was socially awkward. 
I was afraid of people. I wanted to be an analyst for a reason. That reason was because I didn't want to talk to people. I wanted to sit in my spreadsheets. I wanted to sit in my books. I wanted to sit and be by myself and make a lot of money. And what I found is you can't make money without other people. I'm going to, I'm going to prove it to you. It's, it's an argument I can stand solid on. I'm going to do that. So keep listening, but we got to go through this learning process. And so when I came into the uh, all of these opportunities after college, even when I was working for one of the best companies in the world, I the only reason I couldn't make more money is because I had I exhausted my knowledge up to that point. And, and I'm being a little bit exaggerated. And so the only way to get the next level of income was to be called uh, to become a rainmaker in the consulting world, right? The guy that brings in new business, right? Brings in new business. Now, if we use, I had to, I had to be a salesperson, right? I had, to, I had to make my company more money so that they could pay me more money because there was there was other people that, that could fill my shoes from a knowledge standpoint, but there's very few people that can fill the shoes of a, what we call rainmaker or somebody that can bring in big business. And so what I did, you know, the, the idea is go learn how to make some money and then we go and we invest in ourselves. This is where a lot of other people fail is they stop learning. They stop learning. They stop reading books. They stop investing in programs. They stop investing in themselves. And so you need to take a little bit of everything you make and invest back into yourself. Now, for me, I took a lot of bit. I took almost everything I made and I kept investing it back into myself, investing it back to myself, coaching programs, education. And again, here's the thing I want you to understand. If I gave you a hundred thousand dollars, what would you do with it? And so, for some of you that have the knowledge and the experience and and that skill set, you would know exactly what you would do with it. If you don't have the knowledge and the skill set and the experience, you may say, "I'm going to give it to somebody else and let them tell me what to do with it." That is the reality of a lot of people. And so what I'm saying is if you take a little bit of that money and you go buy some books and some education and a mentorship and a coaching program or, or something in a skill set that teaches you how to make money, let's use real estate. I love real estate because it's such an easy conversation. Let's say you learn how to invest in real estate. You can take that money. Let's say you spent $10,000 on a coaching program. You go read the books, you get the mentorship, and then you take the 90 and now that 90 is much more valuable to you because you know how to invest it and you don't need a third party that is going to take the majority of the profit. And so what I'm saying is invest in your education so that you can become worth more because that is what's going to feed this model is your ability to make money. There is the idea of investing only happens when you have money to invest. And if you don't have the money, you have to make it. And the only way you're going to make it is by you becoming more valuable. And that you have to get that. You have to understand that. And so what we say is invest in yourself and an asset. And so maybe you make $20,000 in a year and you got $20,000 saved up. Maybe you, you take all that $20,000, you go buy a coaching program. Maybe you take five of it and go buy a coaching program and use the other 15 to buy a piece of real estate. I don't know. There's not a way to do this. And that's what's so complicated about it, right? There's so much to do and there's so everyone's trying to sell you something and everyone's saying this is the best way and everyone's saying that. And so then what we do, right, we're going we're going to go learn some more. Right. We're going to go learn some more with the education that we just bought and we're going to increase our earning capacity. Now, what does that look like? Well, I'm going to give you my example is I learned how to uh, start businesses. And so I took my business valuation skills, my pro forma building, my modeling, all of that stuff. And I went out there and I said, OK, I'm going to learn how to buy a business. And I bought a business. And what I did is I bought this business seller financing. And the reason I was able to buy it seller finance is, is because there was no financial statements. It literally was bank statements and the guy in, in, in the guy's head because he he worked seven days a week, 16 hours a day. It was a pool company in Arizona. And it was, I think, one hundred sixty, one hundred eighty thousand dollars. It was in the six figure range. And I bought it with almost none of my own money. And the reason I was able to do that is because of the knowledge I knew on how I was a forensic account. I did forensic accounting work. I was a valuation guy. And so I actually built financial statements on bank statements. I took all the bank statements. I said, I'm going to build a I'm going to build a 
an income and an expense statement. And then I want you to give me seller financing because no one else is going to take the time to do this. Most people don't even know how to do it. And so the value that I had was my skill set. And so I, I learned, right? And then I then I went and I got made some more money in the pool business. And then I went over here and I bought some more classes to learn how to run a business because buying a business is different than running a business. And so what I did is I took all of that knowledge base that he had in his head and on paper, and I put it into a software. I systematized and I process, uh, made process inside of this business. So I didn't have to work every day with a pen and paper. I automated this process. I, I made workflows and I bought a software that was specialized for the industry that helped run the, the business. And then I reinvested more of that money into an asset. That asset was either real estate or a business. And I invested it back myself. And I went, now, now we're right, we, you guys can see, we, I went back to the learning phase and said, okay, I'm going to buy some more education. Now, this time I'm going to buy education on marketing because I have the operational standpoint up. I have the financial standpoint up. And now I'm going to understand sales and marketing because without sales and marketing, you don't have a business. If there's no money coming in, and these are the pillars that we do in our business development program. We focus on finances first, then operations, then sales, and then marketing last. And it's sort of a dance because you need marketing out there, but if you over flood yourself with marketing, you can really give yourself a bad reputation out of the gate, right? Out of the gate. And so uh, I, I focus on sales and marketing next. I became a pro at sales and marketing, online sales and marketing. And the idea was now I need to increase the income to this machine called a business that I created. And we just kept going and going and going and going. And I haven't stopped, right? I haven't stopped. And so today I am teaching people this stuff. And guess what? I am also a student of it. And so if you're watching this, you can see learn, understand, and practice. You have to learn it, you have to understand it, and then you go practice. And, and the understanding comes with the practice. And so if you're just out there reading books and you're just out there learning stuff like that, this is never going to happen. Ask me how I know because I was a huge learner, but I didn't take, I didn't, I didn't have any action items. I didn't take any action. I didn't go out and practice. And so I didn't really get to fully understand. And so once I jumped in, once I fully started understanding this aspect of business and profit and sales and marketing and operations and people and human interaction, all that, oh my gosh, it all, it, it started making sense. I was able the fuzziness became clear. And that was through this other thing called personal development. We're gonna do another training on that. But I wanna hit on community. And the only reason I was able to do everything I shared with you is because of one thing, and that's other people. Would I have a business without other people? I wouldn't. And so here's my, here's my you know, you have to prove everything. Here's my proof that you need community. You could be the last person on earth. I imagine everyone went away, but everything stayed. Right? So the people went away, but you were here. You would technically be the richest person in the world. You would own all the jets, all the planes, all the cash, all the gold, all the diamonds, all, all of the stuff in this world. So technically, you would be the richest person ever to live. And eventually, you would turn into a farmer because the food that was there would go bad. right? And so eventually, you would spend your days farming just like they did in the original days right because you have to produce right produce what you use and so there's economics there's so much and we can go into this long dance about economics and so the idea is hey i'm going to become really good at one thing now that we have other people you become really good at a second thing and then we'll trade our services right maybe you're really good at dairy farming, and I'm really good at raising vegetables. And so I'm going to give you some of my vegetables for some of your milk. Very simplistic form. Yet, if you're not there, I can't exchange, I can't barter with you. I can't create wealth with you. And so without other people, you cannot create wealth because who you who's going to buy your stuff? I want to ask you that. If you think you can create wealth without other people, who's going to buy your stuff? No one. And so you become wealthy by the communities that you surround yourself in. And so if you're in a community that has no money, is there any chance 
that you're going to become wealthy if you only operate in that community. Now, when I say community, I am not saying geographical community. That could be one. I'm saying it could be your gym. Anywhere there is other people is a community. And so I have an online community. I have a community. I'm here in Bali, Indonesia right now. I have a, a community in Bali, Indonesia. I have a community of people that go to the gym. I have a community of people that I love growing my business with. I have a community of people that I don't grow. I don't talk any business with. And we only hang around and have a couple of drinks together. I have a different, different, like, you all have these different communities and you have to really look at what I'm talking about. And so the different people you hang around is you have different intentions with different people. And it's those people that you hang around. That's why it's so important to understand this is you may have heard it expressed in a different way is your product of the five people you hang around. And if the five people you hang around aren't headed in the direction that you want to go, guess where you're going to go. You're going to go with them. Right. You're going to go with them because that is your community. And so I want to challenge you and have you start looking at your community. Who's in it? Are they doing the things that they that you want to do? Are they living the lives that you want to live? You can again, you can narrow it down the five people you hang around. And so I'm, I want you to expand that, though. Because if you're hanging around people in your commu different communities, let's say you could go to a gym, right, where they're very healthy, but maybe they don't talk about business. Or you could go to a gym where there's a bunch of business people and you want to start your business. What gym would you go to? Well, I would say go to the gym where all the business owners are because they're the ones that are going to help you get your business started. They're going to, they're, they're going to they're going to transmit that ideas and those thoughts and all of those things. Now, if you go to the gym where business isn't talked about, it's not bad. You're just not going to get anything that helps you in the business. And so you have to be intentional with all of your actions. You have to be intentional with everyone you hang out with. You have to be in uh, in intentional in every conversation. Because if you're not, what will happen is the community you're hanging around with will guide your ship. They will guide your ship. And you want to guide your ship. And so start finding people that do what you want to do. If you want to become a permaculture major and grow a permaculture business, go start hanging around people that are doing permaculture. If you want to start a lemonade stand, go hang around people that are doing lemonade stands. If you want to become an expert at starting, scaling, selling businesses, go hang around people that are doing that. I would love to have you in our community. That's what we focus on. If you want to do real estate, I would love to have you in our community. That's what we focus on. If you would love to travel the world, I would love for you to be in our community. That's what I do. My wife and I have been traveling the world for four years. If you want to be the most amazing stay-at-home parent, there's groups for that. There are literally communities for that. If you want to become a professional basketball player, guess what? There's a community for that. Whatever, if you want to become a professional weightlifter, guess what? There is a community for that. Go find whatever it is that you're passionate about. Go find the people that are doing that and join their community. It will change your life because you are nothing without your community. And I really, really want you to get that because it took so long for me to have that breakthrough because I thought I could just make money. I didn't even understand what money was. I didn't understand how it was made. I was just an hourly guy, you know, making money on a salary that worked hard. And you're still going to have to work hard. Don't, that, this, right? But it's a different type of work. It, it could be fun. Work doesn't have to be hard. The activity is the activity. Your mindset around it is the mindset around it. And so if you're going into work every day and you're drudging through it because you hate your job, guess what? That's going to be hard. But the same activity, if you love it, it's not hard. Maybe it's challenging, but it's not hard. Trust me, I get challenged every day. And I wouldn't have it any other way because that is this adventure we call life. That is this adventure called learning to grow rich. I am tougher today because of the challenges I had yesterday. And I put in the work today for the reward tomorrow. And so you have to be ready for that delayed gratification. Right? You have to be ready for that. And so this world of wealth, it's, I mean, five years is going to come and come and go. And so the question is, is are you going to be on the right track that takes you where you want to go? Or are you going to be on a track that just is sitting on the sideline watching everyone play the game of life? I want to challenge you to get on the court. I want to challenge you to get on the field. I want to challenge you to find your game. 
It may be real estate, it may be business, it may be you want to be the best W-2 employee out there. I don't care what it is. Maybe you want to be the best boss. Maybe you want to be the best employee. Find something that inspires you and go become passionate about it, right? And then learn how to make money from it and then invest some of that money in yourself in an education and some coaching and some development by investing some assets, Right? Go learn some more, learn how to make some more money, learn how to become more valuable in a community that will pay you for your value. Because if you go out there and you learn to become more valuable, but the community that you're hanging around won't pay you for the excess value, guess what? You're, you're going to be exactly where you're at. Ask me how I know. These are lessons I've learned. I became incredibly smart. I became incredibly experienced. I became incredibly knowledgeable. I practiced and I practiced. The challenge was, is I was serving the wrong clients. I was serving people that didn't see the value that I had. And all I did was just go and hang around a different community. That community saw my value and they knew how to leverage it. And they were willing to pay a much higher rate and a much higher uh, uh, value, uh, I'm sorry, money, we'll call it money, for my value. And so value is tricky, right? Value does not equal money, but value is, you always hear this, value is an eye of beholder. And as a valuation consultant, analyst guy, I, it is so true because when I hang around people that aren't business owners, when they're not financial experts, when they're not marketing and sales people, when they're not that, and I start talking all of this talk, they don't see the value. They want to start their business, but they don't see the value. When I talk to people that are doing hundreds of million dollars a year and are expanding their company and their organization and their minds, and I have conversations with them, they see the value and they want to hire me. They want to work with me. They want to take me out to dinner and because I know how to have those conversations. And so find your value, increase your value, invest in yourself, invest in some assets, invest in a book, invest in learning, invest in some coaching. And now coaching, here's the thing about coaching. Most people aren't ready for a $20,000 coaching program, right? Ask me how I know. I've been doing it for that for a decade. And I've been coaching people and I've spent over half a million dollars in coaching to develop myself on myself. And so we have a mastermind matrix. We'll, we'll show you that. We'll do a training here so that you understand and can get the right training and development for yourself. So you're not out there spending all this crazy money on something you're not ready for, and you can ease into that. And so find a community, that's the, that's, that's the lesson. Find a group of people that are committed to doing what it is that you want. Find a community that are committed to having fun, helping each other. And if you wanna learn more about business and real estate, that's what we're doing. We'd love to have you in our community. We've got lots of different options for you, but have a beautiful day. Uh, bring your questions, anything you want to know. I love having conversations throughout this. I love discovering new ideas and this material that you're seeing, this is all created through two decades of learning myself uh, because I've read a lot of books and, and no one, I've yet to see anyone put the pieces together like this. And so I, I'm literally building this plan on, uh, as we go and I'm sharing it with the world because this is the book that I'm going to be writing called Learn and Grow Rich. And one of the founding principles is community. So I hope I uh, challenged your brain a little bit today. I hope I got you thinking. And most importantly, I hope I got you in action. So have a beautiful day. Zach Ullman signing out. Take care, everybody.